call this meeting to order. This is the public input meeting for our Nicola County budget and levy. COVID-19 pandemic, uh, this meeting, uh, which is our 2021 budget and levy public input meeting, is being conducted under Minnesota Statute 13D021. Uh, meetings by telephone and other electronic means. Uh, today we have the county board members and uh, staff participating uh, by Zoom. Under, under Statute 13D.021, we are supposed to recognize uh, each commissioner and make sure that they are able to uh, hear and participate in the meeting. So I'll just do a roll call here. Commissioner Drano, can you hear okay? I can hear you. Commissioner Kolars? Yes, come in loud and clear. Commissioner Kemp? Yes, I am here and I can hear you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Lipke? So far, so good, but I did lose the volume once already, so don't depend on me too much. <laughs> okay. Uh, Commissioner Marl? Yes, thank you, Ryan. Okay, and then we um, have myself, Ryan Crush, County Administrator, Finance Director, Heather McCormick, and uh, Sarah Fromm and Dale Moore running the technology in the boardroom. Um, and then we do have a couple of guests here. We'll have them introduce themselves when we get to the public comment section. So um, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to provide an overview of the proposed Nicollet County budget and levy for the year 2021 and to provide you with an opportunity uh, to give the county board input on these proposals. Uh, we'd like to stress the purpose of tonight's meeting is not to discuss individual property tax valuations. And if you have concerns or questions regarding property values, you need to make an arrangement uh, to discuss these with the Nicollet County Assessor's Office. Um, in addition, comments tonight, uh, we would like to ask you to hold them, um, or for comments tonight, we'd like to have you hold them until after the budget presentation and uh, present them at that time when recognized. Uh, the final budget will be set at the regular county board meeting on Tuesday, December 15th, 2020 in the Nicollet County boardroom. So um, what I can do, Mr. Chair, if you would like, is I can start the budget presentation. Uh, so the first part that we'll look at is the county's overall budget. Uh, the first slide shows our, the county's budget history the last 10 years. You can see in 2012, we were at about a $31 million uh, budget overall, and now we're at a $46 uh, million budget. Uh, you'll see some spikes over the last 10 years. Uh, in 2014 and 2015, uh, that's, that spike uh, is there due to the Health and Human Service building construction. And then we also did a compensation study at that time and added uh, payroll to the overall budget as well. Uh, typically the spikes in our budgets are largely driven by capital projects and specifically in public works. If you go to the next slide, please. This is the overall budget statement uh, for 2021. Uh, it has a comparison to the 2020 budget You'll see that on the top half for revenues, we're showing a 2.99% tax levy increase. Um, under wheelage and sales tax, we're showing an increase of about $100,000 in those revenues based on past history. In the intergovernmental funds under federal, we're showing a 36% increase that's primarily due to federal funding that we're going to receive in 2021 for road projects. It also includes an additional 177,000 of federal funding in health and human services. On the expenditure side, uh, our, most of our expenditures are in four key areas, uh, general public or general government, public safety, uh, highways and streets, and health and human services. Um, the general government overall expenditures are uh, down 4.7 or 4.17 percent. That's largely driven by a change or reduction in capital projects uh, from last year to or this year to 2021. Public safety is up 6.72 percent. Uh, those are primarily staffing costs. 
Uh, public works or highway and streets is up 5.17%. That's largely to do with added uh, road projects for next year. And health and human services overall expenditures are, are basically flat. And you'll notice at the bottom of that page, we're showing an overall budget increase of 1.3%. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a summary of the overall significant changes to our budget. Uh, with a $45 million budget, you can typically uh, break it down into about four or five categories each year that drives any levy increase. For 2021, the main driver of the tax levy increase is uh, wages, benefits, and staffing. And that's very typical. Um, we are a service providing organization and our largest investment each year is in human capital and staffing. Uh, so that's where we typically have our levy increases occur. Uh, so we're showing um, a $960,000 increase in that area. I will note that under road and bridge maintenance, um, we did see a reduction or planning for a reduction of $197,000 in road and bridge maintenance costs for next year. That is due to the pandemic and people driving less in 2020, which has resulted in less gas tax, which then will result in less uh, state aid that we get from the state of Minnesota. So what we did to counter that, as you can see there, we removed $230,000 of uh, seal coating expenses uh, next year to counter that reduction in state aid. Under unrestricted cash reserves, uh, we're not budgeting uh, a significant amount of, of fund balance use next year. Just a little bit for a public works facility study and then some consulting fees that we'll have in public works as well. What we're proposing is a delay in some capital projects next year. Uh, one of them being the North Mankato Service Building remodel, and the other one being a remodel to the Property and Public Service uh, uh, Department area. Um, the board has discussed uh, delaying these uh, due to the pandemic and the uncertainty of state and our state funding next year, and uh, how that will will turn out. So we're going to delay both of those. Uh, projects until we have a better picture of revenue from the state. <coughs> Next slide. So where does the county's revenue come from? This slide shows uh, two pie charts. Uh, one of our being our 2011 budgeted revenue and the other one being the projected revenue for 2021. It's a little hard to see on the screen there, but um, basically a, a bulk of our revenue comes from property taxes and from what we call intergovernmental. And intergovernmental is our basically our state and federal funding. For 2021, you'll see that 61% of our overall revenue is projected to come from property taxes and 31% uh, from state and federal funding. Next slide, please. On the expenditure side, again, two pie charts showing uh, where we were at in 2011 and the projected expenditures for uh, 2021. Uh, on our expense side, we have four main areas uh, where money is spent. It's in health and human services, highway and streets or public works, uh, public safety, and then general public or general government. Um, these you'll see in, the, in these two pie charts, uh, these four categories have remained relatively the same as far as the percentage of expenditures. The last 10 years with health and human services being our largest uh, overall expenditure area of a projected 30% of our expenses for 2021. Next slide, please. We'll jump into the property tax levy now. 
Um, this shows the history, our last 10 years of our overall tax levy increases. Uh, you can see there that our overall average last 10 years is 4.33%. And for 2021, again, the proposal is to adopt a levy increase of 2.99%. Next slide, please. This slide shows uh, the overall tax levy increase um, by service area or by fund uh, from 2020 to 2021. Uh, we operate under four major funds, that being the total revenue fund, uh, the road and bridge fund, health and human service fund, and bonded debt fund. Uh, the revenue fund accounts for 59% of the projected uh, tax levy next year. And you can see above there the, the areas of that, that uh, uh, funds, administrative services, property and public services, criminal justice services, economic development, um, appropriations, HRA and library. And a further breakdown of those expenditures is on the next page. 7% uh, of the projected levy is uh, going to the Road and Bridge Fund, 25% of the projected levy is going to Health and Human Services, and 9% goes to bonded debt. And again, at the bottom, you can see that uh, a 2.99% tax levy increase would generate another $690,000 of tax levy, with 1%, a 1% levy increase now being $230,921. Next slide, please. You can actually skip this next page and go, can go one more then. Thank you. So this uh, sheet, uh, Jackie Kopet, our tax uh, manager, puts this together each year. Under the proposed levy increase of 2.99%, this gives some examples of uh, what a tax levy increase of 299 would do to uh, properties in the county. First of all, up in the green box, you'll notice that the, the county's um, taxable market value is actually going down about $173 million uh, for 2021. That's, uh, that's not typical. Um, typically we see increases, but we are, experiencing in 2021, a 17% reduction in our ag land values. So that is causing an overall decrease in the county's uh, property values as it uh, equates to uh, calculating them with the property tax. In the gray boxes below, it shows examples of how the county's taxes would change uh, next year. In the first gray box, uh, a home valued at $150,000 with no value change would see a $38 increase in county taxes. Uh, a home with a 5% with increase in value at, valued at $150,000 would see an $86 county tax increase. A commercial industrial property with a 6% increase would see a $630 increase in county taxes. And uh, under the ag section, the last box, um, a house, garage, and one acre, which is how we uh, tax and, and separate uh, farmsteads in the rural areas, that if those individuals had a home valued at 150,000 with a 10% increase and 80 acres of tillable, they would actually see an overall decrease in their taxes of $56, and again, that entire decrease comes from the uh, reduction of ag land values across the county. Next slide, please. So who pays what share of the, the proposed county tax levy? This pie chart shows by tax classification uh, or property classification, who would pay uh, what percentage and share of the proposed tax levy. Uh, you can see that 55% is residential, 28% ag, 15% uh, commercial industrial, and 2% utilities. And I put in the box over to the right, which is a little hard to see, but to compare it to last year, 
you can see where the shift occurred. Again, I mentioned our ag land values dropped 17%. So we, uh, so ag land last year was paying 32% of the taxes. That change in value has dropped um, ag land to paying 28% now. And that 4% shift went over to residential. Last, or 2020, they, residential paid 51%. And for 2021, they're projected to pay 55%. So the change in value um, in ag land has, and a slight increase in residential property across the county has caused that tax shift to occur. Next slide, please. So this is the just a, a line graph showing the estimated market value uh, trend over the last 10 years. You can see that in 2015, we had a large uh, increase. In fact, that was the first time we went over $4 billion as a total estimated market value in the county as a whole. And uh, that was uh, attributed to the increase in ag land values. If you remember back in 2013 and 14, ag land values were ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000 an acre in some cases. Well, there's always a lag time on those values. So that showed up, started to show up in 2014 and showed up and peaked in 2015. So now on the other end of the spectrum, in 2021, when we have a, a significant decrease in ag land, you see the sharp decline in our overall estimated market value. Even with the ups and downs though, over the last 10 years, we've seen an annual uh, trend line of over 4% increase in our estimated market value, which is good. You wanna to continue to see that. Some of that is coming from new growth and development, so that does help spread out the overall tax burden on taxpayers. Next slide, please. Uh, this uh, chart shows uh, Nicollet County's tax rate trend. And basically the tax rate is the rate applied to your property's tax capacity, uh, which is largely value driven uh, that determines your property taxes each year. So generally the lower the tax rate for the jurisdiction you live in, um, the lower your taxes will be. And you'll notice that the previous slide showed when we had a spike in ag land values in 2015, you can see what that did to the tax rate for the county, it dropped it below 50. And then conversely now in 2021, when we have a decrease in ag land values that has caused our uh, overall tax rate to, to um, spike. In the years in between, when we haven't had much fluctuation, you can see there that our overall tax rate is in the low 50s. And um, the annual trend line shows that we're just over 1%. Uh, change in our tax rate. So uh, the previous slide showed that we're over 4% in annual growth each year. So our growth over the last decade is, is still far outpacing our, our tax rate increase. Next slide, please. These last few slides show um, all of the taxing jurisdictions in Nicollet County. And the first uh, slide here shows uh, the taxable market values for all the jurisdictions in the county. Uh, the gray column um, shows you that. Uh, one item to note is at the bottom, you see the city of North Mankato and the city of St. Peter. Now, North Mankato's population is only a couple thousand more than St. Peter, but you can see there that their taxable market value is double St. Peter's and that's primarily due to the fact that St. Peter has a lot of um, properties that are tax exempt in the community. Just uh, the state hospital, us, um, in other jurisdictions and other entities that don't pay tax. So that's, that has an impact on the city's overall market value. Next slide, please. Uh, this is, shows the tax rate uh, for all the jurisdictions in the county. So your total tax rate is a combination of um, the county tax rate, Region 9 Development Commission tax rate, uh, the county HRA 
tax rate, and then the city or township you live in, and the school district you live in. And that, that comes up with the column there of a total tax rate that again is applied to your property's value and uh, largely determines what your overall taxes are gonna be. You'll see here that typically the townships are lower than the city's tax rates, and that's, that's fairly common. Um, and that simply is because cities have so much more infrastructure that they need to maintain. Next uh, slide, please. Actually, you can skip that one and go right to the next one. Thank you. And this, uh, this is the overall uh, proposed levy change for each, each jurisdiction in Nicollet County. Uh, you can see it's listed there by the county, Region 9, the HRA, and then all the townships. Uh, you'll notice that most of the townships are zero uh, percent, and that's not uncommon. Uh, a few are doing some increases, um, but typically townships uh, have very modest change in their, their tax levies. You'll see there that the city uh, tax levy increases are anywhere from a negative 1.2% in Cortland up to a little over 5% in Nicollet. And that is a real high level of Nicollet County's budget and overall tax levy. Um, I guess I would open it up. Uh, Mr. Chair, do you want to have the public ask their questions first or do you? Yes, let's open it up to the public. My name is Tamara Phillips Kruger. I'm Douglas Kruger. And we own a house up on Sherwood Drive in Upper North Mankato. And we weren't told until we got here that we had to make an appointment with the assessor to deal with this. We were told in this letter to come to this meeting tonight so that we could just share with you folks that and I did send a letter. I don't know if the county commissioners has received it as of yet. No. Uh, I wrote a letter expressing that I'm sad. I bought a house in 2012 and my property taxes were about $3,400. They're proposed to be $6,964 up 10.2%. I don't think that's a 1.31% increase. And I'm saying something because it's crazy. We have four houses for sale right next to us on a street that has 30 homes. Nobody can afford these property taxes. So why are our valuations so high when the home I live in was built in 1971? And there hasn't been any upgrades for the last nine years. Yeah. So I'll just jump in here, Doug, and tell me. Um, so tonight's meeting is yep. focused on levy and budget. Yep. Yep. And it sounds like you're concerned about the value of your property. I'm concerned that a 10.2% increase is outrageous. In your in, taxes or? In, yeah. in our property taxes. Property taxes are proposed. We have had 10%. a year of COVID as well. How much did your value go up? Well, 60, uh, 69, mm, went up about 30, 33,000. Sure. So your concern probably is more towards the value, that you think the value probably shouldn't be that high? I'm believing that that's the case, and, and I'm still glad that we came because I learned more about how this whole thing works, and, it, and your explanations are very good. Um, it's $700 but, a month in taxes. Uh-uh. Mr. Chair, what's the address? 1612 Sherwood Drive. Thank you. Um, so yes, that and and Tammy and I are both going to probably make an appointment to talk to the assessor's office too, because I believe for for no apparent reason for the past two years actually, uh, two years ago our market value was uh, probably about twenty five thousand dollars less than twenty twenties, 
and now another increase of another thirty, thirty-four thousand dollars. So that's you know fifty, sixty thousand dollar increase in two years. In your values. And in in their value. And and but what Tammy said. Not selling. We have we have neighbors that are trying to sell their properties, and they're not having a whole lot of hits because when they find out what the taxes are, they're they're walking away. And our concern would be that if this trend continues to go up and up and up all these for the next four or five years, let's say, uh, eventually we're gonna be taxed out of our property. We'll, we'll have to try and get it sold because yeah, we no. won't be able to afford it. This is nuts, $7,000. <clears> um, the proposed tax increase uh, last year was $6,321. And this next year is almost $7,000. So that is an increase uh, quite a bit, 700. Well, our farm wasn't dollars. even taxed like that. That's nuts. So one thing to keep in mind, and you you know this, of course, um, well, I that that's, that uh, tax statement, even though we send it out, that includes the school district yep. and the city. We're planning on going to the city of North Mankato on Monday. Yep. To, so Just to let them know what our concerns are. It's because, still a proposal, um, though. A biggest piece of what's happening as I explained in the presentation though, is uh, it's shifting. we had that ag land shifting. increase. Yes. And so that shifted more tax burden onto houses. So um, that shift, you know, that, that changes over time. Um, like, like I mentioned six years ago, uh, it was the, the reverse. Ag land was paying a share of the residential piece. 2015. Yep. So, but value is a big part of what drives your property tax cost, and that's that's what we both understand, and and that's why I'm that's why we're here is because um, the the trend for the market value continually increasing that largely yep. is causing that type of a a percentage in property tax increase. Yep. What I would do is I would talk to our county assessor Lorna. Sandvig. Yep. Of course, we have every intention to. Um, and she can explain the process that they go through, and she can actually probably explain in detail your neighborhood even, and the trends and how they. Well, I've, I've talked to some of my neighbors. We've had uh, social with them here and there, and um, at some point, this is one of one of our neighbors that's right across the cul-de-sac. Um, he shared with me what his market value was. He has it on the market currently for four hundred and fifty-nine thousand. And his market value is three hundred and seventy-nine thousand. So there seems to be some kind of a weird discrepancy there. And then his in in because of that, his property taxes are um, a lot less than ours. And it's actually kind of disheartening to find out what he's paying compared to what we're paying. And both properties should be or are close Similar. to being valued at the same amount. So. Well, typically we don't discuss values at right. this meeting, right. but I would encourage you to talk to Lorna and she can explain it in more detail. And I will say though that our assessor's office is bound by state law on how they value the properties. Mm -hmm. And so there is a method to what they do. Yep, I learned some of that when uh, back when I used to work, work here. Yep. I talked to, uh, once we hit the $405,000 mark, you lose your homestead credit. Yep. And that was an increase that year as well. I believe that was probably five, maybe six years ago, five years ago. But at some point, this just can't continue like this. And a 10.2 two is absurd. What I would do is I would talk to Lorna and then you'll have an opportunity in, it's typically in April, yep. where all the tax and jurisdictions have their valuation meetings. So North Mankato will have one there as well, and then you can actually attempt to appeal your uh, values. Okay. In, okay. Right just, before they're due. We just we just went through what it told us to do. No. Nope. Yep. You did. This this is the budget and levy right. um, piece, but uh, that in the spring is is property valuation. So if you okay. want to appeal your values, that's the. the process you go through at that time of year. The spring meeting? Yeah, the spring and, meeting. And, and part of the reason we came tonight was we just wanted to make you all aware, you know, the board and, and everyone involved that um, in this in this tough year, uh, 
it's kind of disheartening to see a 10% increase in this tough year. Um, everybody's, not everybody, some people are losing jobs and everything else. So we just wanted to make you all aware of where our thoughts are coming from. I see Terry nodding his head, so I know he's, yeah, he's listening. But as, as a business owner, I'm a self-employed person. There's been no unemployment. There's been no money coming my way. And this has been a struggle year. And to get this Thanksgiving week was really, really disheartening. That's all. And I wanted you to be aware of it. Because I love my home. I don't like paying $7,000 to live there. I agree. I concur. That's why we kind of came tonight. Now we know what we need to do next. Yep. So. Lauren, I can uh, let you know she maybe even has those dates maybe already. So. Okay. All right. Well, noted. Thank you. Sorry for the. Nope. Thank you for your time, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Have a Merry Christmas. All right. Nice seeing you again. Good to see you too. All of you. Thanks, you guys. You bet. Mr. Chair, you and I received an email today from uh, the city, or excuse me, the Chamber of Commerce in St. Peter. And. It is largely an email regarding their valuation concerns, but I would like to at least acknowledge here today, they didn't ask that we address this, but I assume it was intended for tonight's meeting. Um, and I did provide a copy of this uh, email to all the uh, county commissioners. And again, we typically don't address value issues here. And so I will instruct the chamber to contact uh, our assessor's office to discuss their value concerns. Um, but I will, I'll just read the first uh, paragraph, if that's okay, Mr. Chair, of their email, where it says, uh, uh, Dear Nicollet County leaders, respectfully and politely in acknowledging the county has many needs and mandates to fund, we would ask on behalf of the business community and residents that the county strive to lessen steep tax increases. If the county is seeking revenue gains from property valuation increases, we ask those gains to help reduce the overall increase in taxes. We appreciate the dedication and service of county leaders and employees. Many businesses, organizations, and residents have suffered financially during the pandemic. And then the email goes on to discuss primarily, again, their valuation concerns. So uh, I'd just like to have that acknowledged that we address that and I will follow up with them. And actually I'll have our county assessor, um, Lorna Sandvik uh, also follow up with them because I think her explanation of how their property is, is classified and taxed will help them understand uh, why their taxes are the way they are. And they, they mentioned in their email, um, their tax or value increase as compared to their tax increase. And those two things you just can't uh, compare apples to apples. So we'll follow up with them. Thank you, Ryan. Let me just make sure, um, Sarah, is there anybody else out in the boardroom or anybody else on Zoom that has joined us to participate? Uh, no, there's not. Okay. Uh, so with that, Mr. Chair, um, if you would wish, you are free to adjourn the meeting unless you have, or the board has any questions regarding the budget or levy. Any other questions before we adjourn? Marie, Marie has a comment and Terry. I, I just wanted to go back to the deferring of the North Mankato project. Um, we had talked about this in our budget meeting. Not only are we deferring it because of costs and COVID and less revenue, but there's also changes in delivery of those services and changes in workforce. And until we know how this all plays out, it's probably wise to wait. Um, I don't really think the public realizes that both social services, probation, and public health are in that building, in and out of that building at different times. That was my only comment. 100% correct, Marie. Terry? Just a broad comment first, Ryan, thank you and your team for putting together a presentation that lays out uh, the values and the way that uh, taxes are determined and all the different entities whose taxes appear on our tax sheet uh, information that goes out in the mail. And just confirming, John, that 
I'm not confirming, just reminding that we've had a number of conversations about the budget and about taxes. It's not just tonight. Tonight's a public hearing and an opportunity for the public to share thoughts with us. Correct. Correct. The, the budget really is a year long discussion for all of us. Anybody else? Heather, do you have anything? No, nothing at this time. Okay. I guess we can adjourn it.